With a brand new handheld system hitting the market in 2001, it was inevitable that Pokemon would make the transition onto the Game Boy Advance. The two generations of Pokemon games had been an incredible success, and with a third one on the way, fans had more reasons to be excited than ever. By this point, the franchise already exploded in popularity around the world, with a highly watched anime series, countless amounts of merchandise, and even a few spin-off games by this point. While Pokemania had definitely died down quite a bit, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire still found a huge audience, and you can count Dribson and myself among that crowd. While technically, our introduction to Pokemon was Pokemon Stadium, as well as the anime, Generation 3 was the first time we really got a taste for the series growing up. We owned Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and then later Emerald alongside Fire Red, and to say we were hooked would be an understatement. This was our opportunity to trade with each other and our friends, comparing our teams and laughing at the stupid nicknames we'd give our Pokemon, and for us, the series never really reached those heights again regarding its social aspects. Needless to say, we're both very nostalgic for Gen 3, and naturally, we were both very excited to get to these games for this rating series. We'll be rating all 135 Pokemon from Gen 3 on a scale from 1 to 10, based on factors like the Pokemon's design, usefulness in battle, typing, etc. Again, we're counting region-specific forms for the generation they're introduced, not for the Pokemon's original generation, and other form differences only receive a separate rating if they're a fusion. And before the ratings begin, we actually have an announcement to make. We're going to be starting a live stream playthrough of Pokemon Emerald over on my Twitch page, where I go through the game with drips and handling co-commentary. If you saw our stream playthrough of Pokemon White or the stream highlight video I posted, you can expect the same type of vibe. That's going to be starting Saturday, July 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and then every subsequent Saturday afterwards at the same time. Feel free to come by if you can. Anyway, let's move on to the ratings. Even though Trico is my least favorite of the Hoenn starters, it is still a very respectable creature, and I would not be ashamed to start my journey with it. Trico is a fine first starter pick, as it has just a little bit of sass that hasn't really been seen in other starters thus far. Something I really like about the Trico line is how the middle evolution Grovile looks like a natural evolution of its predecessor, escaping the trap so many middle Pokemon suffer from. I'm going to disappoint quite a few Mystery Dungeon fans here, but I think Grovile is mostly just alright. At least it's different enough to not just be bigger Trico. Ultimately, Sceptile ends the line on a weaker, but still solid enough choice. I just wish the design was a little more intricate in anything but the tail. Sceptile is pretty cool though. Sceptile used to be my least favorite of the Hoenn starter final evolutions, but after using it more, it's grown on me a bit. I mean, it's basically the perfect starter. It's absolutely precious and looks exactly like you'd imagine a fire chick would look like. Also, when it charged your fluff fruit and new Pokemon Snap, that just melted my heart. Look at this little dude. I mean, how can you not like it? Torchic is so cute. Is anyone else reminded of those screaming rubber chickens when you see Combuskin? That's all I can think of when looking at this thing, and it's a little distracting. Eh, Combuskin doesn't really do it for me. This sort of falls into that weird middle evolution trope. While I don't exactly like how it looks compared to Torchic, this is such an awesome Pokemon in battle that it makes up for its shortcomings. Blaziken is my favorite starter, hands down. Ever since I first played Gen 3, which is where I started with Pokemon, Blaziken has been one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, and easily my favorite starter. You heard right, I do like Mudkips. Like a lot, actually. They're a pretty cool starter. Remember, do you like Mudkips? I do, and I hated that meme. I think it actively made me like Mudkip less. Not that I don't like Mudkip, but I think it's the weakest first form starter in Hoenn. Love how happy Marshtomp is to be here. Just look at that smiling face. But anyway, another pretty solid middle starter Pokemon. And Marshtomp isn't any better at all, and is a Pokemon that handled the transition to 3D and Gen 6 with less than good results. Hoenn has had the best run of starters for me so far, and Swampert ends it on a pretty high note, with some cool new black fins and a pretty intimidating look. I like Swampert, but I think it's a bit overrated. Like, yeah, it's strong and only weak to grass, which you never fight in any major battles barring your rival's Grovile. 
Continuing the trend of good dog Pokemon, Poochyena is a cute yet also striking and beautiful little pup. Poochyena is oddly cute in a way, almost like he's trying his best to be scary. Hmm, <coughs> something about Mightyena doesn't look right, probably the black patches of fur, but it's still a very good design. What Mightyena loses in any cuteness points, it gains in toughness and coolness points and more. I usually have one of these when I go through Hoenn. It does look like you might puncture your hands on Zigzagoon's sharp fur, but that doesn't matter to me because I will give them all the pets. Zigzagoon is peak Route 1 normal type. He's just a little rascal and cute and perfect. Linoon has a very pretty design, even if some of Zigzagoon's identity was lost without the jagged edges on the fur. Linoon is like the opposite of Sentrid and Ferret, where they made the evolution less cute, and other than being able to solo most of the Elite Four with Belly Drum, doesn't offer much for me. Wurmple is pretty much the perfect Stage 1 bug Pokemon to me. It's equal parts cute dude and sickly bug, and I just adore it. Wurmple's gimmick of evolving into two Pokemon at essentially random is neat, but otherwise doesn't do enough to differentiate itself from other early game bug Pokemon. Finally, a Hoenn Pokemon I don't care for! Cocoon Pokemon rarely get high marks from me, and while Silcoon is no exception, it is at least not unappealing to look at. Unless I'm looking at the two together, I can't tell you the difference between this and Cascoon. It certainly is a beautiful butterfly Pokemon, and that's about all it needs to be. I think its pattern is more visually striking than Butterfree, which gives it an edge there, but Beautifly still isn't a phenomenal design. Same as Silcoon, but the purple shade looks a little worse. Unless I'm looking at the two together, I can't tell you the difference between this and Silcoon. Not really a fan of dust stalks. I've never been keen on moss anyway, and while the colors are a good combo, the face and wing design just doesn't gel with me. Dust stalks kind of lost me. I think it's the clearly semi bug inspired eyes that draw me away from this design. There's nothing really exceptional about Lotad's design. It's just kind of a cool looking Pokemon with a single nice looking standout feature, that being the lily pad on top. I like Lotad, but it's honestly not super interesting of a design for me to give it anything more than a perfectly fine score. I don't know what it is, but Lombre freaks me out. Something about the sharp toes, the body pattern, and face just combines into a weird looking design. It almost looks like Lombre wears pants, and I don't like that. It definitely loses some of the bizarre factor that made me freak out over Lombre, and I dig the body style, but Ludicolo's giant mouth loses it some points. At least Ludicolo was able to show some emotion, unlike its previous evolutions. Also, Mirror B. A pretty simple but effective design, not much to say about CDOT except it's good. Does anyone else think this looks like a Mario power-up on feet? This almost looks like it'd be an item in an RPG instead of a Pokemon. Like you'd place it down and watch it waddle over to enemies before exploding. Nuzleaf has nipples. This one also looks like it has pants, and clearly defined nipples. Shiftry is a very interesting design inspired by Tengu, but some of the body contours like the spherical shoulders and the Gata-like feet do bother me. I mean, I kinda like the Wind Guardian of the Forest design, like it'd be an antagonist turned ally in a Studio Ghibli film. I used to love Taillo, but I think I've mellowed out on the design over time. It's certainly a cute bird with some cool colors, but not exactly spectacular. Taillo is just a bird, but he's got that look like he knows he's tough. Same thing with Swellow, but the plumage does look a little better here. Swellow is just a bigger Taillo, but it almost works in a way, and what are you gonna do about it in the face of a guts boosted facade? Wingle is very iconic, and for good reason. Maybe it's my natural love for seabirds, but every time I look at this Pokemon, I can't help but love it. Wingle is just a seagull, and living in Massachusetts close enough to the coast where I'm pretty familiar with them knocks it down a bit. It looks a little strange, especially compared to its previous evolution, but Pelipper is a really great cartoonish representation of a pelican, so it works for me. 
Pelipper's funny looking, I guess, but I feel like it'd be too front heavy to fly. Like its entire beak is in front of its thin wings, and it has next to no body or tail behind it. I really like Rolts. The mushroom-like body and contrasting colors really stick out, and its curious expression in the official art seals it for me. I'm not a fan of Rolts' design, since it looks like it got the worst bowl cut known to Pokemon. The ballet dancer concept is fine and all, but Curlia just gets too far away from what made Ralts appealing for me to really like it. Curlia's better at least, having a face, arms, and legs. With how much fan art this thing gets, I'd be fine if I never saw a Gardevoir again, although objectively, it isn't that bad. I don't care how weird it is and what you want to say about it, tell me in the comments, engagement is good for the video and I won't read them. But I love Gardevoir as a Pokemon, and it's one of my favorites from Hoenn. What a cute little fella, it reminds me a lot of the Skeeters from Super Mario 64, and I always thought they were cool, so I quite like Surskit. <laughs> Except for the face, I don't really get what makes this an evolution of Surskit, but Masquerain still looks pretty nice. Masquerain is such an interesting design that I wish I could use an emerald. Almost as cool as Scyther, but not quite. This is a Goomba. I'm not a big fan of Shroomish, and it kind of reminds me of an early game RPG enemy, but I do like the gif where someone spins his face around into a smug smirk. I didn't realize it until making this video, but Breloom freaking rules. It has such a cool design that could only be improved by giving it arms worth a damn. Breloom is a much better design than Shroomish, and feels more like a Pokemon than a standard JRPG enemy. Cloud Connection is loafing around. Slackoth is an absolute mood. According to some Pokedex descriptions, this Pokemon is always hungry, and I've never related to a Pokemon harder than that. Vigoroth is such a diversion from Slackoth and Slaking that I think kinda works, and is still a worthwhile pickup if you decide you don't want to evolve it into Slaking. Cloud Connection is loafing around. Slaking is pretty funny, both design-wise and gameplay-wise, but ultimately falls a bit flat for me with its fairly boring appearance for a final evolution. Why is this thing called the Trainee Pokemon? What's Trainee about Ninkata? It's not a bad design, but just why? I don't know, Ninkata's not very appealing to me. Maybe it's the pure cicada design with muted earthy colors? Ninjask is pretty cool looking, with the color differences between the body and the wings being a nice touch. Ninjask fixes everything wrong with Ninkata and looks more like a Pokemon as well. I think how you obtain a Shedinja is really interesting, but that's essentially all I like about it because man, the physical design puts me to sleep. Shedinja is a fun gimmick, but honestly not much more than that for me. Another fairly generic cute spheroid Pokemon. The colors are nice, but the eye design does annoy me. I think it's the eyes, but I'm really not a fan of Wismer. Uh, no thanks. I don't care for this yelling little turd. Loudred exudes that Gen 1 Golbat sprite energy, but with absolutely zero charm. It doesn't creep me out like Loudred, and it's cooler than Wismer, ending this line out on a surprisingly good note. I actually kinda like Exploud's design, maybe since it was one of the first Pokemon I specifically bred to be competitively viable in X and Y. Not a bad design by any means, but damn if Makuhita doesn't look like a Kirby enemy. Kinda cute, but otherwise unmemorable. I'm not a huge fan of Makuhita. I may just not be a fan of non-eye-shaped eyes in Pokemon. Never been a fan of Hariyama. It's a little bit too anime fighter for me, if you get my drift. Hariyama's better at least, and more visually striking. This was also the first shiny Pokemon I ever got legitimately. Why is Azuriel so sad in the official artwork? Anyway, it's basically a smaller Meryl, but Meryl is amazing, so Azuriel gets a lot of points from me. I don't hate Azuriel, but it's still a baby Pokemon, and I don't like that. 
I can't believe they based a Pokemon on Squidward's house. I think Nosepass is a little funny looking at least. Cute. And that's all I've really got to say. When I played through Alpha Sapphire, I kept one of these on my team up until I caught Kyogre. I don't know why I kept it all the way, but that game's credit scene showed my Skitty in epic combat with Kyogre, which was entertaining for two seconds. Pokemon like Delcaddy exemplify good Pokemon design for me, a recognizable creature that has enough fantastical elements to stand out and that give you a full picture of what kind of Pokemon it is. Ever since I was told that Delcaddy is wearing one of those pillows you get for airplanes to sleep in your seat, I've liked this Pokemon just a bit more. Dripson told me a few days before I wrote this script that Sableye has a ruby, sapphire, and emerald on its torso, and damn, that is way too on the nose for even this gremlin-ass motherfucker. This little goblin is just one of the more eerie designs in all of Pokemon. I'd rather see a Gengar in a haunted alley than this thing. I don't know why, but Mawile has always stuck out as a badass design. It's a cool idea, a great pose and body shape, and it just looks vicious. I kind of like this design in a weird way. It's one of those asymmetrical designs that isn't too egregious. Aeron is a cute little dude, something very rare for steel types. Although, does anyone else think its abdomen looks like an ocarina? Aeron is, for some reason, a cute steel type, and I kind of like it. It's not a bad design, but Laron just looks a little bit too much like a spotted Rhyhorn to me. Laron kinda loses me a bit, and it's almost as if Aeron was just bigger. The predominantly gray colors are a bit much for me, but otherwise Agron is a very cool design. I especially like the horns on the faceplate. My man Agron. This hulking beast of a Pokemon is almost always in my teams whenever available. Although it's not as bad as I remember, I've never been a big fan of the Metatite line. Also, it's wearing a diaper? Metatite looks like it's wearing a head of garlic, and I don't like that. Again, I remember Medicham looking a little worse in my head, but it still doesn't appeal to me in the slightest. Medicham does not look good at all. Like, the gray, pink, and yellow don't work well together. The knee nipples, everything about this Pokemon design-wise makes me dislike it. Electrike is another fairly simple but still very charming design, and the predominantly green pattern makes it stand out against electric types. He's just a little dog, but he's clearly got some anger issues to work out. While the yellow and blue color contrast looks very nice, the shape of Manetric's yellow tufts of fur just look off to me. He's just a big dog, and he worked out those anger issues. What if Pichu cosplayed as a battery? The obligatory single-stage evolution electric-type rodent. The same, but blue. And negative. Wait, there's two of them? Volbeat is a strange creature, but I like it quite a bit. That red band around its neck in particular looks pretty cool. You'd think that the Firefly Pokemon would be part electric, right? The same, but actually quite a few small differences this time. Never mind. Wait, there's two of these as well? And this one also isn't an electric type? <laughs> Rosilia is a very beautiful Pokemon, as you'd expect from one based on flowers, with its spiky crown being a nice touch as well. I had heard from somewhere that the move Sweet Scent increased the odds of finding a shiny Pokemon. So I would stand in the Route 117 grass with my newly caught Roselia, spamming the move in hopes of encountering a shiny. It didn't work after like 30 tries, so I gave up, and the move doesn't even increase shiny odds. Gulpin's hand looks like a ball sack. I'm not a fan of Gulpin at all. It's pretty much a nondescript green orb, with the same design for its hands as its lips. I vastly prefer Gulpin's green coloring, but the black diamonds on Swalot's chest do redeem it. I think Swalot is much better, but still not a great design. The purple is easier to look at than the green of Gulpin as well. I like Carvana and all, but its face is just a bit too... busy for me. Otherwise, it's pretty cool. 
I don't dislike this design, but it is actually a bit much for me as a first stage Pokemon. This one's pretty badass. The name is a little too frank, but if you set out to combine a shark and torpedoes, you couldn't do much better than this. I think this is a great design, but it took me an embarrassingly long time to actually realize that Sharpedo has no tail. Like in all of its art, I internalized it as turning sharply and had a yellow star pattern down its side. I think that's the only real issue I have with this design. It honestly only feels like half of a Pokemon. Why is it grinning so hard? What is Whalmer up to? I always thought it was funny that Whalmer has just the tiniest eyes for a Pokemon. It may just be a whale, but Whalord is too iconic to not rank high for me. Big. That's it. Big. Send tweet. I will not elaborate. Big. Numo looks pretty dopey and I kinda love that, but otherwise it's a pretty good design. When I was young, I thought its nose thing was its eyes, and its eyes were its mouth. There's a lot I don't understand about Camerupt. What's up with those face tufts, and why does it have three zeros on its side? I don't get it! Actually quite the improvement over Numel, Camerupt is a design that has grown on me significantly over the years. Torkoal is a cool Pokemon, no doubt about that, but once we stop producing coal, these fellas are all gonna die. I'll just leave you with that fun fact. I like the idea of a Foundry-esque tortoise, but being literally right next to Camerupt that already fills the role of lumbering quadrupedal magma-based Pokemon detracts a bit for me. <laughs> what an odd yet adorable little Pokemon. Spoink has always been a favorite of mine from Hoenn. I actually think Spoink is pretty cute, and I distinctly remember using one of these in my earliest playthrough of Ruby. Grumpig removes a lot of what made Spoink so good, and while I guess it isn't a terrible design, it just looks too strange to me. Not as cute as Spoink, but a bit charming in its own way still. I don't know why I love Spinda as much as I do, but it's adorable and unique thanks to those spiral eyes, a very underappreciated Pokemon. I couldn't tell you why, but as a kid, I thought this evolved into Skarmory for the sole reason that they were both found in Route 113, at around the level that Pokemon I had were evolving at. Trapinch is very cute, but the rounded body shape doesn't really jive with me. Trapinch is surprisingly cute. I think it's the eyes. Insert vibrator joke here. Also, Vibrava is a very beautiful Pokemon that I could have sworn was a bug type, but whatever. Eh. Not a huge fan. And how does Trapinch evolve into this? Even more beautiful than Vibrava, Flygon is a bona fide gem of a Pokemon. Flygon is great, but I don't think it's as amazing as a lot of other people may say. Do I think it deserved a Mega Evolution? Sure. Am I disappointed it didn't get one? I didn't lose any sleep over it. Perhaps a little too abstract as a cactus Pokemon, but I still like Cacnea quite a bit. I don't like how this thing looks. I like the idea of a cactus grass type Pokemon though. I get that it's supposed to emulate a Scarecrow, but something about Cacturn's pose scares the bejesus out of me. It's not a stellar design, but the Scarecrow slash Cactus design almost kind of fits for me. It's a bit too plain though. Adorable little bird blob, with the cloud-like wings especially making this a top-tier flying Pokemon. It's just a little small bird. Nothing really interesting about it. No real patterns or design here. Altaria is a majestic, beautiful Pokemon that doesn't get nearly enough love. Easy 10 for sure. The dragon type makes it a bit more interesting, but there's still not much here besides Cotton Candy Bird. Zangoose has a very cool and striking design, although I'm only just now learning that apparently it has a lifelong feud with Seviper? Which I get, you know, mongooses and snakes and all that, but still, a weird bit of world building. I think Zangoose is pretty cool, but looking at it, I feel like I should like it more, but I just don't for some reason. A pretty decent snake design all told, but Seviper's razor-sharp tail actually looks pretty badass. 
I think Surviper is pretty cool, and is very distinct from Arbok, which is nice. I've never really cared for these two, but I guess Lunatone isn't a bad Pokemon. I don't really dig this design. I guess I prefer this to Solrock, since I think the Crescent Moon is more interesting than a full sphere shape. Well, I guess it's an effective design for a rock that looks like a sun, but, you know, eh. Yeah, I don't really like this design at all. Maybe this could have been Rock Fire and Lunatone could have been Rock Dark? Though that would give Lunatone a clear advantage given that they're supposed to be counterparts to each other. Not much to really say about Barboach, but the light blue, gray, and black colors are really cool. Barboach doesn't really do it for me. This guy's such a big derp and I love it. Whiskash gets a good score from me just from the face alone. Whiskash is a bit funny looking at least, and gives off a bit of friend vibes, like a little bit of slow bro. What I love most about Corphish is how it looks like it's constantly raising its arms like it's always excited. Such a fun little dork. Okay, what's the difference between this and Krabby? They're both red and tan crustaceans that evolve into forms with overly sized pincers. Okay, I legitimately don't remember ever seeing this Pokemon before, and it kind of terrifies me. It looks like Corphish grew up, put a star on its head for some reason, and did a lot of drugs, because those eyes are... something. Crawdont is better, at least, and I do quite like its design. It's just a shame it has to share its water dark typing this generation with Sharpedo. It's fine. Nope, not a fan of this one. It's somehow too simple, but has a lot going on, and I don't like it. I don't know why, but I really love Claydol's design. It's very mysterious, and just looks like it has a history to it, which is what I think they were going for with this and Ball Toy. At least Claydol is more visually interesting than Ball Toy, but I'm still not big on this one. Lilip is weird, but I really like it for some reason. Maybe it's the purple and pink colors or the body shape, but yeah, I like it. Taking inspiration from fossilized plants is actually a pretty creative idea, but I think they easily could have gone more plant colored for Lilip. Not much improved over Lilip in my opinion, but still a very respectable Pokemon. Much better. Cradley's design has really grown on me after I used one in a playthrough a while back after almost exclusively picking Anorith. Most of Anorith's design is pretty good, but I can't stand creatures with eyes on thin body strands, so unfortunately, I have to knock some points off. Anomalocaris is epic. Anorith is based off of Anomalocaris. Ergo, Anorith is epic. Also, this looks like a creature from the cell stage in Spore. The eyes are still a bit of a problem for me, but everything else about Armaldo is fucking awesome. Armaldo is a really cool design, and feels like everything that Kabutops wanted to be. Feebas just looks confused. Bulbapedia describes it as shabby and old looking, and that's pretty accurate. This is just worse Magikarp. <laughs> I know it's the point of Milotic, but it really is beautiful. Very dazzling with its colors and features, and deserving of its in-universe status. And this is just better Gyarados. Getting footage of Milotic for this video was actually my first time obtaining one using the beauty stat, which is nice, since I've never really used this Pokemon before. Cast form is just a gray blob with a face and a weirdly scrotum-shaped appendage on its lower body. My favorite form is the rainy form because it looks like a slime from Dragon Quest. This is another gimmick Pokemon, but it stands out as being unique in that it is versatile with its gimmick, being able to change in all asterisk weather effects. My favorite is snowy form, since I like hail as a weather effect and it just looks so cozy in its little frost shell. Holy shit guys, it's Rango from the movie Rango. I think there are plenty of ways to make a chameleon design look good, but Kecleon is distinct enough and has a unique enough gimmick that I can give it a pass. I don't know why, but Shuppet's design has always really stood out to me. It's simultaneously mysterious and a little bit silly in all the right ways. Shuppet is like those kids' ghost costumes that are just a sheet draped over them with eye holes cut out. 
And I kind of like that. Why does Bennett look like it's about to bust out dope rhymes? I'm not the only one who thinks it's got the rapper stance going on, right? I actually really like Bennett, but I feel like it's missing something. Almost like it's a middle evolution. It's a very simple design, but the skull is absolutely iconic and reminds me of the bubbles from Ocarina of Time. Eh, not a fan. I think it's the cartoony skull with three teeth that put me off a bit. For some reason, I've always thought of Dusclops as a major downgrade to Dusk Skull, but looking at it now, it's actually kind of cool. I dig the Dark Mummy aesthetic. A bit better, but I'm still not a huge fan of Dusclops. I really like Tropius for absolutely no reason. It's just a big old tree dude just lumbering around, and that's pretty great. Tropius is clearly just a banana tree, and I kinda dig it. When I was a kid, I thought Chimico was inspired by thermostats because of the red on white color scheme. I was clearly a dumb child because it's pretty obviously a wind chime. I mean, it's right in the name. Still an amazing Pokemon though. I think Chimeco is precious and will not tolerate any Chimeco slander on this video. If Cloud gave Chimeco anything less than an 8, I will slap him. It's weird how all of Absol's body features feel strange if you isolate them in your mind, but put them together and you get an incredible combination. High marks for this one. Absol's great and all, but I don't really think it's a stellar design. It almost leans into that too cool area, but not quite, so I still kinda like it. I give this one a 7 because... why not? Nope, still not a fan of baby Pokemon or gimmicks. Snorunt constantly looks like it's shivering, and that's really depressing. I know they're an ice type and can resist super cold temperatures, but someone still needs to help them. Snorunt is just a cute, cozy little dude. I have always loved Glalie since the moment I first saw it. It's both simple and complex at the same time, intimidating and cool. It's everything I love in Pokemon. No idea how you get to this from Snorunt, but I don't care. Glalie rules. Glalie absolutely does not look like it would evolve from Snowrunt, but here we are. Also, I think it should be a rock ice type, despite how bad of a type that is. Cute little blubberball boy. Sfeel is adorable, and beats Seal 10 times out of 10 in cuteness. Can't say I care for the mustache, but otherwise Celio is another really good Seal Pokemon. This series has a great track record with those so far. Not as cute as feel, but still a solid design nonetheless. While I'm not a huge fan of Walrein or walruses in general, I'm giving this a higher score than I thought I would because I remember it looking way worse. I've always liked Walrein, but never really found the time to get one for my team in any Hoenn playthrough, since they were accessible so late in the game, and Water Ice isn't a great typing. So, is Clam Pearl's shell part of its body, or is the sentient part of Clam Pearl just the pink inside part? What is Clam Pearl's deal exactly? I don't trust it. Clam Pearl is okay at best, really, but its charm comes from its evolutions that have nothing to do with the clamshell designs at all. A not super extravagant design, but it works pretty well. Okay, I lied. Huntail is a half clamshell as its head ornament. Also, its tail looks like a whole fish from Subnautica. Never realized until now that Gorbis is somewhat based on mermaids, so I was really confused as to why there were seashells on where its chest would be. That means this thing canonically has boobs. Do with that what you will. I lied again. This has clamshells covering where its nipples would be, I guess. And perhaps a clamshell at the end of its tail? Relicamp looks like a turd. I can't really explain why, but I really dig the Coelacanth design here. Simple, cute, but it works. God, this Pokemon is so bad. Like, it's a single stage Pokemon that has the stats of a first stage evolution in a three stage line, and it's a pure water type to boot, which is probably the second most common type combination you could find in the whole series. Bagon looks like it has a silver mullet, and that's kind of weird, but otherwise it's an alright design. 
Bagon is actually pretty cool, not gonna lie. A pretty simple design that works well for a first stage dragon Pokemon. <laughs> Why this guy looking like a blimp? Okay, Shogun really loses me. It's a dragon... cocoon? <laughs> Look, it's just a dragon, but it's just too damn cool to not give it a 10. It's taken a while for me, but Salamence is totally awesome. I do prefer my dragons slimmer and sleeker though, so not quite a perfect score from me. Beldum just does nothing for me, sorry to say. Not quite a huge fan of Beldum, but it's not terrible at least. Maybe I'm a little biased receiving this as a gift from Steven so many times. Same with Matang. It's better than Beldum, but it almost feels like it's been magnetonified here. Metagross at least makes up for its earlier form shortcomings with a cool, if not exactly grand, design. Okay, Metagross is awesome. I don't know who at Game Freak decided that Hoenn needed two pseudo-legendaries, but I'm glad that they created Metagross. I honestly gotta say that most of the legendary titans don't rank pretty high for me among the legendaries, and while Regirock certainly isn't bad, it really is just a pile of rocks. I don't see what's so special about it. I think that Regirock is a bit too weird looking, and honestly doesn't quite fit with the other Hoenn Regis, but it's not too bad. It's a nice Pokemon. A bit better than Regirock, but still not a great design. Weirdly enough, this looks like an enemy you'd find in a sci-fi JRPG, and I get that Pokemon is technically a JRPG, but it's odd how un-Pokemon-like Registeel looks. The best design that I'm giving a 1 purely for its Diamond and Pearl Sprite, because yikes. Otherwise, a solid 6 from me. The legendary Pokemon rarely ever look cute, but Latias and Latios look absolutely adorable, and I just want to pet them. I think Latias is a pretty solid Pokemon design. I just wish that there was another one that was blue. The same, but blue. Love how there's two sets of Pokemon in this generation that are basically red and blue palette swaps. I think Latios is a pretty solid Pokemon design. I just wish that I wouldn't make the same joke twice. I kind of wish Kyogre had a different color for its body accents other than red, but otherwise Kyogre looks badass. This used to be my least favorite of the mascot legendaries in Gen 3, but now I think it has the cleanest design of all of them. This rating is pure nostalgia, because I grew up playing Ruby with Dripson, and us finally battling and catching Groudon on the school bus one afternoon is still a vivid memory for me. But really, it looks awesome. Pokemon Ruby was my first Pokemon game ever, so I do have a soft spot for Groudon, but its design is honestly a bit... much for me now. Although I didn't play Emerald nearly as much as Dribson, since that was his game more than it was mine, I still think Rayquaza is one of the single best designs for a legendary Pokemon in the history of the series, and I especially love fighting him in Super Smash Bros. Brawl's Subspace Emissary. This is my favorite legendary Pokemon of all time, and easily one of my favorite Pokemon in general. If I also said, for unrelated reasons, that Emerald is my favorite Pokemon game, would you believe me? Jirachi's pretty cute, but that's all I've got to say about it. Oh boy, the Mew clone of this generation. Jirachi is actually a pretty nice design, but nothing spectacular. Interesting choice to end this generation with a spindly armed robot looking dude, I guess. I don't much care for any of Deoxys' forms, so I suppose I'll name the attack form as my favorite? I don't know, man. Deoxys is a design that is so out there, it almost comes back to being really cool. I'll give it the extra point for the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire post-game Delta chapter, though. Also, my favorite is Speed Form. And that's all the Gen 3 Pokemon rated. Let's turn it over to Dripson to analyze that data. Thanks, Cloud. First, of course, we're keeping a running total of our average scores for each generation. Cloud's average score was a 7.03, his highest so far by a sizable margin, while mine was a 6.22, leading to a combined average of 13.25. The best score on average so far. Of all 135 Pokemon from this generation, we gave 25 of them the same score, and again, 
Most of these were Pokemon we both loved. Next, let's take a look at our total score counts for Gen 3. And as you can see, it's pretty clear why Cloud's average score for this generation was so high. With less than 10 Pokemon receiving a 4 or below, and none getting a 1 or a 2, his higher ratings definitely brought that average up. Meanwhile, I was more consistent across the spectrum, tending to favorite middling to good scores, though it should be said that I gave out significantly more 9s and 10s this time than the previous two gens. And as always, here's a quick recap of our ratings for Gen 3. Now it's time to hand out the awards, recognizing the best and worst Pokemon from this generation. First up, the awards for best and worst starter Pokemon based on the combined average of all the creatures in each starter evolution chain. By a wide margin, the perfect partner award goes to the Blaziken line. We know it's not the least popular opinion, but when Torchic almost gets a perfect score, you know it's at least going to be high up there. And the Atrocious Ally Award goes to the Swampert line, though it should be said that Swampert and its pre-evolutions still got pretty decent scores. Next, we have the awards for the best and worst legendary Pokemon, and considering it received a perfect score of 20, it's no shock that the Mythical Masterpiece Award goes to Rayquaza, although the other two members of the Weather Trio also deserve some recognition. And the Fantastical Flop goes to Registeel, solely because of my insanely low score due to, you know, that unfortunate hand gesture. We will know that if I gave Registeel a different rating while ignoring that damning factor, then Regirock would take this award instead. Now it's on to the awards for best and worst type, determined by calculating the average score of all Pokemon in each type group. The Excellent Element Award goes to Flying, as Gen 3 had a ton of great bird Pokemon and some other really cool flying secondaries as well. And the Catastrophic Category Award goes to Poison, which only had a handful of creatures this generation, but none of which could really elevate it above a middle-of-the-road score. Then, there's the awards for Best and Worst Glow-Up, found by tracking the best and worst change in our combined scores from a Pokémon to its immediate evolution. Our Terrific Transformation Award goes to Milotic, who improved drastically over Feebas from an 8 to a perfect score of 20. And our Metamorphic Mistake Award for Gen 3 actually goes to both Silcoon and Cascoon, to whom we both gave a far worse score than Wurmple. Moving on, we have the award for the Pokémon that Dripson and I disagreed on the most in regards to our scores. There's two Pokémon who get the Contentious Critter Award this time, Why Not and Registeel. Oddly enough, I gave both of them a 7 and Dripson gave both of them a 1, though obviously, that technicality for Registeel applies here as well. Finally, we have the awards for the best and worst antagonists, aka the best rival, gym leader, elite 4 trainer, champion, or villain team leader based on the team's average combined score. As a reminder for the rules of this award, duplicate Pokemon aren't counted twice, we're judging on final encounters only where applicable, we're basing these ratings on Pokemon Emerald, trainers must have at least one new Pokemon, super bosses only count if they're fought in the post game and don't have any future gen Pokemon, and no Battle Facility exclusive trainers. Now, the Big Bad Boss Award goes to Team Aqua Leader Archie, the first villain team leader to get this award. He doesn't have a large selection of Pokemon at his disposal, but definitely has some fantastic ones like Mightyena and Crobat. And the Bad Bad Boss Award goes to Roxanne, the second time the Rock Gym Leaders snagged this award, and thanks especially to her nose pass, is also the worst performing antagonist that we've ranked so far. And of course, we'll finish off by listing the top, bottom, and stuck in the middle with you Pokemon for Gen 3. The Hall of Fame holds Pokemon who received the perfect combined score of 20, and Milotic and Rayquaza are our two inductees this time, finally breaking the Fire Dog pattern from Gens 1 and 2. 
The Hall of Shame hosts Pokemon who received a combined score of 2, but since I didn't hand out a single rating of 1 this time, no one knew was inducted and Smoochum thus remains the sole honoree of this less than prestigious title. And the Hall of Tame is for Pokemon who received a score of 5 from us both, and Beldum is the only one receiving this special commendation today. Well, that's all the Gen 3 Pokemon rated. As I said at the beginning of this, this is the generation that I grew up playing, so of course I'm going to be nostalgic towards these creatures. But even when I disregard that bias, I really appreciate how creative the designers got when making these Pokemon. Gens 1 and 2 are fairly simple by comparison, and there's a lot to be said for that simplicity, but the Gen 3 designs stand out in a lot of ways, all culminating in a very good set of Pokemon. Gen 3 was the first generation of Pokemon that I played, so nostalgia is a huge part of why I enjoy these games so much. I would play these games for hours every day after school growing up, even if I wasn't really doing anything of note in the postgame. I just kept overleveling my Blaziken and sweeping the Elite Four, but I was having so much fun. Looking back more critically, I still think these are fantastic games, and while they still might be my favorite, I don't think they're the best games in the series. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then give it a like, leave a comment, and make sure to subscribe and click that bell to see when new videos go live. Remember, we're going to start streaming Pokemon Emerald every Saturday beginning on the 23rd, starting at 8pm Eastern Time. Head over to my Twitch page to catch that, links in the description. Until next time, this is Cloud Connection and Dripson signing off. Catch you later!